I have a lazy sister who, believe it or not, made me jeopardize my career by putting my neck on the line to secure her a job. Loyalty to family can sometimes be the greatest burden, and I speak from personal experience. Let me introduce you to my sister, Stella, who is a year younger than me. We are the products of our mother's love life, which never led to marriage. The closest thing we had to a father figure was Uncle Greg, our mother's brother, who had been looking after us for as long as I can remember. It's incredible how, from the way we carried ourselves, you'd never guess we were being supported by someone who had his own family. I graduated from college before Stella and was desperately searching for a job. Knowing Uncle Greg's influence, I approached him for help. After expressing my gratitude for everything he'd done for us, I opened up about my job search. We discussed it for a while, during which I could sense that he was assessing whether my college education had been a waste or not. Fortunately, he seemed satisfied with my qualifications and promised to help me secure a job. Uncle Greg was a man of his word, so I was overjoyed. Three days later, he called and asked me to bring all my documents to a company. To my amazement, he had secured me a position as the head of human resources. This was beyond my expectations. I had zero experience and was fresh out of college. Nonetheless, I was determined to prove myself, not wanting to let my uncle down. A year later, Stella also graduated from college and embarked on her job hunt, which proved unsuccessful. I suggested that she visit Uncle Greg for assistance, and I planned to accompany her. However, my concern was that Uncle Greg who had high standards, would be disappointed upon meeting my sister, a law graduate. I, too, was disappointed, but I knew I had to let Uncle Greg assess Stella for himself. We arrived at Uncle Greg's place, and he engaged my sister in a conversation. I remained mostly silent, and even I could tell that she appeared unrefined. Uncle Greg didn't say anything about my sister, but the disappointment in his eyes was evident. After some time, he promised to help her in her job search. Two weeks passed, and Stella hadn't received a favorable response from Uncle Greg. She reached out to him, but he would merely say he was working on it. One evening, our mother and sister approached me for a discussion after I returned from work. Exhausted, I asked to have the conversation the following morning before I headed to work. They both woke me up early the next day, and Stella started by expressing her frustration with Uncle Greg who she believed was taking too long to find her a job. I defended him, emphasizing how good he'd been to us and that she needed to be patient. Stella, however, insinuated that Uncle Greg was now playing favorites between us, citing how quickly he had found me a job, while she had waited for weeks. Our mother chimed in, suggesting a solution for Stella's joblessness. I was initially happy for my sister until I heard the proposed solution. Our mother suggested that I use my influence as the head of human resources in my company to hire Stella as a sales agent with a high salary. I was shocked and turned to Stella to see if it was a joke. Our mother further argued that it was only natural for someone in my position to do so. She claimed that since I was the head of my department, nobody would question the hire. I hesitated to say no immediately and asked Stella if she had any experience as a sales agent. She retorted by asking if it was necessary, given her law degree. It was frustrating to see her demand a job for which she lacked the qualifications and experience. To make matters worse, both she and our mother were insisting on a high salary for her. I made it clear to my family that what they were asking for was simply not feasible. I explained to my mom that Stella's law degree had no connection to my line of work. She raised her voice, insisting that I should look at the bigger picture which, according to her, was the substantial salary Stella would earn once I secured the job for her. I pointed out that fulfilling their request could jeopardize my career, as it might appear as favoritism if my superiors found out I'd employed someone unfit for the job. My mother and sister, however, dismissed my explanation, accusing me of not prioritizing family success. This was when I truly understood the bondage that family loyalty could become. How could they insinuate that I didn't want our family to succeed just because I declined to risk my career for their sake? It felt like pure selfishness. I reiterated my earlier stance and prepared some food. The rest of the day passed in silence, but the discussion continued to weigh on my mind. 
there was no way I could accede to their demands. I hadn't even been on the job for two years, and it wasn't time to act like I owned the place. My mom and sister started giving me the cold shoulder, essentially trying to guilt trip me. I felt miserable in my own home, so I began intentionally coming home late to spend less time there. However, that tactic didn't improve the situation. I finally decided to seek advice from someone I knew would offer an unbiased perspective, Uncle Greg. One day, I stopped by Uncle Greg's place on my way home from work and shared everything that had been happening at home, except for the part where Stella accused him of playing favorites. Uncle Greg listened and assured me that getting a job for my sister was not a difficult task for him. He mentioned that he'd been stalling the process because he had doubts about her capabilities for the job, even in her field. He pointed out certain observations he'd made during their discussions, which I agreed with. Uncle Gray explained that if he recommended my sister for a job, it would put his own reputation at risk with his friends who were her potential employers. He made it clear that she didn't meet their expectations and could damage his standing. He also revealed that the talk of not wanting family success was an emotional ploy to manipulate and guilt trip me into doing their bidding. He urged me not to sacrifice my budding career for my selfish sibling and suggested that I consider moving out of the house and renting my own apartment if the pressure became too much. Uncle Greg's words deeply resonated with me, and he was right. I needed to let my mother and sister understand that I was an independent person who couldn't be swayed in any direction they wished. But despite this realization, I couldn't bring myself to do it. I decided to make a one-time compromise for Stella's sake. One morning, I approached Stella and asked her to come to the office later that day to pick up her appointment letter. The relief in her demeanor was palpable, and my mother smiled, assuring me that I was making the right decision, even though I knew she was wrong. I was unknowingly setting myself up for a major disaster. Stella came to the office, received her appointment letter, and commenced work. However, the real issue was her lack of productivity, which was evident. The problem was that her role was not in her field of expertise. Two months later, most of the staff began complaining about Stella's performance. I had to address the issue with my sister before it escalated further. I pointed out that she was not contributing to the company, yet she was overpaid compared to some hardworking, productive colleagues. I explained that, under normal circumstances, firing her would be the best option for the company, but I was using my influence to delay such a decision. Stella defended herself, claiming she was still new to the job and needed time to learn the ropes. While her reasoning was understandable, the real problem was her lack of effort and enthusiasm. She seemed to be lethargic, simply waiting for payday. Just as I was about to dismiss her, she dropped the bombshell. Stella said she was considering taking a one-month paid leave to attend to her health, despite no apparent health issues. I knew this was just an excuse. Here was someone on the verge of facing multiple complaints, and all she seemed interested in was stirring up trouble. I sternly warned Stella against entertaining the idea of a leave and threatened to fire her if she attempted it. I didn't let the matter rest. When I got home, I brought it to our mother's attention. I reminded her of her assurance to help Stella secure a job. And now, barely two months into her employment, Stella was requesting two months of paid leave. I made it clear to our mother that if Stella's productivity didn't improve by the end of the month, I would ensure she got fired. Our mother downplayed the situation, suggesting that Stella would get the hang of it in due time. She asked me to be patient with my sister. I agreed to give Stella the month to improve her productivity, and my course of action would be determined by her performance. I patiently waited for my sister to step up and be more productive but it was a regrettable situation for both of us. Unfortunately, my superior got wind of the ongoing complaints and summoned Stella and me. During the review, it was revealed that Stella hadn't been productive since she started as a sales agent, and I had failed to take the necessary action, which would have been reporting the issue to management. My favoritism was exposed, and we were both immediately terminated. I began pleading for my job on the spot, but I was informed that the decision was final. Stella, on the other hand, rather than showing humility, stated that the job was beneath her, considering her educational qualifications, and walked out of the office while I remained on my knees begging to retain my job. 
I regretted not heeding Uncle Greg's warnings. His predictions had become a reality, and I had allowed my sister to ruin my career. I returned home, a mixture of tears and anger in my heart, only to find Stella casually sitting on the couch with a bowl of popcorn, watching a movie, seemingly undisturbed by the whole ordeal. I immediately confronted Stella, and we started exchanging heated words. Our mother rushed to the scene, trying to calm the situation. At this point, Stella hadn't shared what had happened, and my anger was directed towards our mother. I began shouting at her, holding her responsible for emotionally blackmailing me into bringing Stella to my workplace. When she learned what had transpired, our mother raised her voice in return and demanded that I never speak to her in such a manner. I regretted that I had been disrespectful but was unable to control my emotions at that moment. Feeling overwhelmed and wanting to avoid doing something regrettable, I ran out of the house. I didn't know where I was headed, but I knew I needed to be far away from them before my anger got the best of me. I stayed in a hotel for three days, crying and not hearing from my mother or sister. After a while, I decided to visit Uncle Greg. He was surprised to see me, especially on a weekday when I should have been at work. He asked about the issue, and I couldn't hold back my tears. It took some time for him to console me, and then I began telling him how I regretted not heeding his earlier warnings. What I didn't mention was that I'd been avoiding his house and calls ever since I helped Stella get the job, because I knew it would disappoint him, and I was right. Uncle Greg was initially upset with me for not listening, but his anger quickly turned to empathy as he understood the pressure of family expectations. He didn't want to discuss the matter further. He simply asked me to get into his car, and we drove back to our house. When Uncle Greg arrived at the house, he was furious. It was the first time either Stella or I had seen him like this. My mother, however, had grown up with her brother and wasn't surprised by his anger. She refused to take responsibility for my job loss and defended herself by stating that all she did was ask me to help my sister secure a job. She and Stella turned the tables on me, claiming that I hadn't guided Stella properly at work. Uncle Greg saw through their attempt to avoid blame and gave them a stern look before assuring me that everything would be okay. He promised to do everything in his power to help me find a new job. I thanked my uncle, who wasted no time in leaving the house. My mother, upon seeing her brother's departure, turned to me and called me a disgrace. She questioned why I had made such a big deal out of the situation and involved someone who had little or no business with it. I couldn't respond the way my emotions wanted me to, so I simply went into my room and closed the door. It has been two weeks since the incident, and both my sister and I are jobless. I am not sitting idly, waiting for my uncle to work his magic. I am actively searching for job opportunities and hope for a positive outcome soon. In an update, I can say it has been extremely challenging staying at home with my sister and mother. They have both united against me, making me feel like an outsider in my own family. I returned last week from yet another unsuccessful job hunt, feeling frustrated and exhausted. It appeared that even my uncle was struggling to secure a job for me, and I couldn't blame him. If I had been wiser, I wouldn't find myself in this current disaster. After submitting my qualifications to a firm that promised to get back to me, I decided to rest on the couch for a moment. My short nap was abruptly interrupted about five minutes later when my sister started screaming in excitement. She deliberately came to the living room, dramatizing her joy, as if she was deliberately looking for trouble, as she often did. Our mother hurried to her, and she informed her, loud enough for me to hear, that she had been invited for an interview at a law firm. Our mother was thrilled for her, but I tried to mind my own business. However, my sister couldn't resist taking a jab at me, insinuating that she was achieving for herself what sisters and uncles, who claimed to be family, could not do for her. It was a clear reference to me and Uncle Greg. I couldn't allow her to add to my frustration, so I gave a sarcastic laugh, mentioning that people celebrated interview invitations as if they had already landed the job, not stopping there. I added a cutting remark about interviewers discovering they'd wasted their time with an empty-headed candidate. My sister was visibly affected, and she wanted to confront me, but our mother stepped in, clearly favoring her. This didn't surprise me. I hadn't expected anything different. 
Stella went for the interview and returned with a smile, informing our mother, right in front of me, that she was preferred over the other candidates and was offered the job on the spot. The pay wasn't as much as she had earned in my firm, but she was assured it would triple in three months. My sister and mother took delight in rubbing it in my face, making me wonder about the judgment of the employers who hired her. I also wondered about the quality of the other candidates if Stella was chosen over them. Nevertheless, I decided to wait and see how it would play out because I knew my sister's track record with jobs. In the second update, I had a serious altercation with my mother this morning, all because of my sister Stella. Since she got her job, my mother decided that no one else in the house, except me, should perform any chores, no matter how minor. I had tolerated it until this morning when my mother approached me and demanded that I do Stella's laundry. The demand was insulting, and I refused outright. I told my mother that I wouldn't touch my sister's clothing even if there was a gun to my head. My mother argued that Stella needed to focus on her new job, something she claimed I lacked. According to her, we should support her in any way we could. I asked my mother if Stella had ever done my laundry when I had my job. I finally told her that if Stella was too busy to do her laundry, she could do it herself or take it to one of the numerous dry cleaning services in the city. I retreated to my room, closing the door, feeling utterly humiliated. How could my mother demand that I do Stella's laundry? I decided to reach out to Uncle Greg and inform him about the humiliation I was enduring at the hands of my mother and sister. I was hoping for some good news, but amidst the torrent of insults I faced daily, my uncle revealed he was still trying to pull a few strings, though it might take time. He expressed his displeasure with the way my family was treating me and assured me he would talk some sense into my younger sister. One evening, as I was in my room, Stella returned from work and started arguing loudly over the phone. From her words, I gathered she was speaking to Uncle Greg. She rebuked him for meddling in our affairs and demanded he stay away from us. When my mother asked her about the call, Stella referred to Uncle Greg as that man who doesn't know his place. My mother seemed to approve of Stella's stance, believing I was foolish for involving an outsider in our family matters. In the third update, I made the decision to move in with Uncle Greg and his family after Stella's outburst. It became evident to him that I was enduring a lot at home. I informed my mother about my decision, but she dismissed it, claiming I had been trying to distance myself from her and Stella anyway. The only time I saw or heard from Stella was a month later when she showed up at Uncle Greg's place to invite both of us to an award event organized by her firm. According to Stella, the event aimed to recognize the efforts of key individuals, and she was one of the honorees. She wanted Uncle Greg and me to attend, perhaps to showcase her productivity. I confronted her, telling her she should be apologizing to Uncle Greg instead of inviting him to the party. Stella, undeterred, made condescending remarks, claiming she was offering him an opportunity to witness her glory. I refused to attend the event, expressing my disgust at the entire situation. Uncle Greg tried to convince me otherwise, but I couldn't comprehend why he wanted us to attend a party that seemed nothing more than a charade. In the final update, everything fell into place. I finally understood why Uncle Greg insisted we attend Stella's party. In the end, despite the difficult situation, Uncle Greg insisted that I present myself at my best for Stella's party. Reluctantly, I attended the event alongside my mother. As the ceremony unfolded, individuals were recognized for their contributions. When it was Stella's turn, she confidently stepped onto the podium, radiating confidence. Unexpectedly, she cut off her boss's statement and began speaking passionately. Her words were pointed directly at me emphasizing her triumph over the hurdles she claimed I couldn't overcome. She labeled me a failure lacking the drive to succeed. Stella praised our mother, who basked in the attention. However, to my astonishment, Stella's boss invited Uncle Greg to the stage. Surprised, Stella watched as Uncle Greg debunked her claims. He revealed the truth about how I lost my job due to Stella's actions and our mother's selfishness. Uncle Greg disclosed that he orchestrated this scheme to expose Stella's lack of productivity. Stella was publicly fired on stage, drowning in shame. My mother hurriedly left, unable to bear the humiliation. 
Uncle Greg introduced me to influential people that day, assuring me that a job opportunity would emerge soon. I severed ties with my mother and sister, knowing they would likely come crawling back for assistance eventually. Looking back, I am grateful for Uncle Greg's support during this ordeal. If not for him, I might have faced this situation alone. Reflecting on this experience, I am overwhelmed by the twists of fate and the importance of having a strong support system. I welcome your thoughts on this story. What would you have done in my position? Consider this twist. What if I didn't have Uncle Greg to fall back on? Share your opinions in the comments below. My name is Mr. Redito, and I share drama stories every day, ranging from inheritance disputes to cheating tales. If you enjoy these narratives, don't forget to subscribe. I'll be back tomorrow, reminding you that kindness is always in style. Peace.